Hello everybody! Welcome to our What's Up Doc Live! It is now a very special episode because we are actually streaming simultaneously in our Low Carb Con page. In our Low Carb Convention, this is the first low carb and fasting convention in the country. So hello po sa lahat. I hope you are all there very much ready and getting ready most especially to get to know not just our co-founders, but also one of our esteemed speakers sa upcoming low-carb convention. So hello po sa lahat. For those who are usually watching in our YouTube right now, dito lang po muna tayo. In our pages, we have the Global TV Network. It's also airing in our page, Dr. Josephine Grace Rojo. And most importantly, our beloved low-carb convention, Low-Carb Car- low Con 2021. It is the Philippines' first low-carb and fasting convention this coming July 24 and 25. We hope to see you there. So ngayon po, ang pag-uusapan natin is actually one of the most controversial topic when it comes to our nutrition about ito sa fats or taba, okay? We will actually differentiate ano ba talaga yung taba, what is fats, lipid, oil, may pagkakaiba ba sila, dapat nga ba tayong matakot dito, ito nga ba yung rason kung bakit tayo hina-heart attack ngayon, kung bakit maraming tumataas yung blood pressure, bawal na po ba talagang kumain ng baboy, hindi na po ba talaga tayo kailangan kumain ng pin, mga piniritong isda, piniritong fried chicken, and all that. Kailangan ba tayong matakot sa saturated fats? Dahil ba natutulog ang oil na coconut oil ay tula din ito, magbabara din ito sa ating ugat? Is it as simple as that? So para po mabigyan ng linaw ang lahat ng yan, I would like to welcome, please let me welcome our very special guest for tonight who will help us understand it all and hopefully it can it, it can enlighten yung mga fears no yung mga takot yung mga fat phobia na nagkaroon sa atin ever since we were young so let's all welcome chemical engineer marco reyes hello po sir hello doc race uh, thank you for having me yeah uh, thank you so uh, much yeah, i'm so excited to be here Oh, the honor is mine, no? Tapos, uh, of course, medyo matagal na rin tayo nag-promote with this kind of lifestyle sa ating mga respective pages. But somewhat ngayon pala talaga nag-cruise yung landas natin. And we can actually see uh, marami pong common followers ating mga pages. Oh. And they are also so happy na finally, oh. finally, nagkasama po tayo. So thank you so much po for honoring this, this guesting natin. Nag-research nga ako dati, uh, yung mga keto doctors kasi, di ba? Uh, it's so nice to see yung mga keto doctors in, in many countries, meron keto doctors. Eh. Mm. Kung sa Philippines kaya meron na. So nag-search ako, uh, hirap, dyan sa diet doctor. And then I saw you, uh, oh, no, that's uh, that's so nice. Uh, that's a very welcome development sa atin na, mm. na we have you. Thank you so much po. And our number is actually increasing now. And thanks also to non-doctors, non-medical practitioner who are also advocating this. Kasi even for me, it's not very easy to be really out there and be out loud, especially noon that I was still in training. Of course, I am under clause and everything. But now that I'm already in my private practice, kaya actually ngayong taon lang din ako medyo, medyo mas nag-ingay, kung baga. So mm-hmm. I'm so happy that mas marami na po tayo ang lahat. And together with our co-speakers sa upcoming low carb con it's going to be really loud and it's uh the good kind of loud yung ang gusto natin kasi we are so saddened by the many um post there regarding the wrong food intake talaga na prino promote na usually nagkakaroon ng even more problems nakikita natin we all have our own loved ones so combing to so many other illness Dahil nga lang sa pag-follow sa usual dietary guidelines. At yun pa rin, in the end, it may improve their blood lipid panel o yung mga laboratory nila, but their end result, how they actually die at a very young age, it's actually the mortality, yung end result ng lahat, actually hindi pa rin nagbabago. So, to start with, sir, so kahit pa, alam na nila at kilala ka nila, but for the sake of those who are not yet very familiar with the both of us, I'm Dr. Rojo, and this is Sir Marco Reyes. Tell us something about yourself, Pa. 
Uh, ako po si Marco Reyes, isa akong uh, chemical engineer. I've been in the uh, fat uh, business since 1996, so 25 years na. So almost lahat na ng klase in relation to fat from production to marketing to research. Uh, tayo nagpo-push ng maraming mga research uh, sa paggamit ng fat, uh, especially yung coconut oil. Like for example, meron tayong pinush dun sa uh, virgin coconut oil and uh, COVID-19, which has been very successful. We also had uh, research done sa uh, Philippine Children's Medical Hospital, sa prenatal, uh, yung mga babies na, na binigyan sila ng coconut oil and their uh, development na, na boost because of the uh, absorption of mga nutrients. And then we also have, uh, we will be having even research done on breast cancer. In, in Philippines, so we are, we have one of the hot spots for breast cancer in the world. And one of the things that we will be uh, researching together with UP Manila scientists is yung effect of coconut oil on uh, breast, ca breast cancer. So yung mga madaming mga review of literature has been very promising. Uh, so now we are having a very exciting development kasi from the time na, na demonize, pinasama ang saturated pagkakaroon coconut oil. Ngayon ay nababago na dahil dito sa mga overwhelming evidence. Okay. So maraming salamat po. So 1996. So sobra-sobrang tagal na talaga. Okay. So it's <laughs> quite, I think it has been a very challenging time then. And you surviving this long and you still staying in that business. So sure na sure na alam na alam nyo po yung ginagawa nyo. Because if you are, if you are not convinced that you are on the right path, madali lang pong maswe yan. Madali mo lang iwanan yan. You can jump off from this industry going to the next. Okay? But so far, kahit nung unang panahon pa na wala pang uso-usong low carb, wala pang label na keto, wala pang ang nagpro-promote ng mga health benefits talaga and all that, the only, I think, uh, experience ng mga tao with with oil is just coconut oil, lana, na pinaniniwalaan din at ginagamit ng mga ninuno pa natin, especially in the locality in the Philippines. So, with you, sir, I want to emphasize also na aside from your, what you just uh, said, no, about your background, is you are also an author. So, b before becoming an author, actually, hindi pong basta-basta yan. You have to cross-reference yung mga sinasabi nyo. Wala po kayong ilalagay na isang linya sa libro nyo na hindi backed up by science. Okay, tama po ba yun? Yes, tama. Napaka-importante yun. Lalo na yung mga pinapag-aralan ng ating mga sadyante sa junior high school, senior high school. Ang hindi kasi maganda dito sa atin, marami sa ating pinag-aaralan ng mga sadyante natin, ay mga western-based textbooks at yeah. sa larangan ng life science, biology, nutrition, Marami sa kaalaman din natin ay nakuha din lang natin sa mga nababasa natin na it's also evolving. Eh. Yung research on health and wellness is also evolving based on dun sa mga ebidensya na nakakalap natin. Kung magbabasehan lang tayo dun sa mga dati pang informa information o like for example yung mga basic na minsan nagde-debate, di ba, yung mga low-carb, keto, at yung sa iba na importante daw yung carbohydrates kasi uh, mamatay tayo kung walang carbohydrates, kailangan kumain ng, ng kanin. E, itong mga bagay na to ay kututusin uh, junior high school pa lang ay nandun na po sa mga binabasa na mga ating estudyante na carbohydrates are not essential. Yes. So, so this is a fact na which is not subject to any debate yeah. na kahit po lang kinakain ng tao na kanin, uh, asukal, uh, flour, or kahit matatamis na prutas, we will maintain that uh, blood sugar, plasma blood sugar of, of around 70 to 99 milligrams per per deciliter. So mga, mga basics na to and uh, naggumawa rin tayo ng mga libro para talagang mga kabataan natin kasi we, we have to start from our youth eh. Madami kasi ngayon, minsan ang hirap pa 
pag nakikipag-usap tayo sa ating mga generation o yung sa mga parents natin, grandparents natin, mga produkto pa sila ng mga propaganda na binigay sa kanila eh. Uh, even yung sa mga kung pa maraming uh, nagko-contact sa akin kasi mga doc, mga doktor nag like, lipid brownell nag keto tapos nasasyak yung mga doktor sa so, tumaas yung LDL cholesterol tumaas yung total cholesterol mag uh, papa stand study so mga ganito eh evol- evolving yung uh, evidence uh, but at the same time there are very basics of nutrition which is not subject to any debate. So, kaya ito po ang ginagawa natin, importante yung that we will be empowered by right information. Kasi sa panahon ngayon, we have an overload of information, may fake news, uh, at the same time, merong half-truths, at meron din namang uh, correct information. So, po yung ginagawa natin, namin ni Dr. Uh, Grace, ay ito yung para ma-empower tayo mismo yung sa mga tamang mga information tungkol sa ating kalusugan. Oh, so, thank you so much po. No? And for those of you who are not able to get it, si Sir Marco po ay isang author ng mga science books, basic science books na ginagamit po sa junior high school and senior high school. Marami-rami po silang libro, so marami yun. And actually, I can relate to that kasi I really appreciate na yung mga yung mga basic po yun ba yun talaga yung pinakaimportante the basic sciences bakit yun yung pinakaimportante kasi walang bias yun it's purely based on science when you are talking about chemistry biochemistry biology wala pong sponsor yan wala pong kahit anong mga uh, mga mga industry either any business industry actually na nakaka-benefit dyan because that is pure science. The problem is when we go to higher studies, college, postgraduate courses, our knowledge sometimes nagiging specialized na, but that specialized knowledge may not actually be the basic talaga. Parang merong nalulost in translation kung baga along the way. I was able to appreciate this because uh, among our, among us sa uh, mga magpipinsan sa amin, we are actually the older na mga anak kasi yung papa namin, siya yung pinakauna nag-asawa. So we actually have cousins na high school pa last a few years ago when we started this. So true enough, sinabi niya sa akin na totoo nga talaga, I, te- I was able to appreciate so much yung chemistry lecture namin that carbohydrates is only a short-term source of energy. But by nature, it's the fats talaga na long-term o yung pangmatagalan natin na source of energy. One way of saying na dapat hindi talaga tayo masanay sa short-term fuel na ito. Okay? As compared to fats, which is actually the more natural. Kaya lang along the way, because of businesses and all that, meron yung nalulost in translation. At eventually, what we have now is carbs, 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 carbs on carbs. Ano ang kinakain ng mga Pinoy? Kanin? Ano yung ulam nila? Pansit. O meron pang kanin at saka spaghetti. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yung um, sandwich, uh, ba- buns, pero yung laman, spaghetti, pinapalaman yung pansit, yung sotanghon, yung bihon. It's carbs on carbs. And what do we have now? Hindi man tayo matataba as compared to our Western counterpart. Pero ang Pinoy po, along with other Asian eaters, no, na rice eaters, pinakamataas yung episodes or incidents of diabetes and other related illness. At yung lifespan po natin, actually, medyo mababa. Okay? Hindi tayo parang mas matanda compared to others. Compared to other countries, tayo ay nasa bottom na, na hindi talaga tayo yung pangmatagalan kumbaga. And it's so sad dahil our country, our climate is actually blessed, very blessed to grow the natural foods na kailangan na kailangan ng katawan natin. So going back to your story, I'm so happy po and na napag-usapan ito because marami talagang mag- nakaka-relate din. And meron nga tayong mga ano no, mga groups. I think Zarius is part of Philippine Reversing Diabetes Group. Nakikita ko to parate. Saturated fat is much oh, efficient. Oh, oh, if you will, then glucose, steric acid. So steric acid is uh, very important 
part ng ating, we can discuss that later and maraming salamat po. Your input usually sa group is very important para sa mga those who are struggling with diabetes. So, Sir Marco, with you po, how did you, I know that you are in this as part of your career, as part of your profession, but what is your low-carb story po? Uh, kasi di ba, uh, 25 years na tayo sa coconut industry, uh, lots uh, mga fats pero parang dumating sa punto na uh, I was uh, 215 pounds and tapos uh, may fatty liver na rin ako tapos nakita yung creatinine ko medyo tumataas na uh, naging hypertensive na rin sabi ko mukhang hindi yata credible na <laughs> you tell people that coconut oil is the healthiest oil on earth and you are unhealthy. <laughs> Tapos, it so happened that uh, kasi pag may mga black propaganda against coconut oil na, for example, coming from the American Heart Association na uh, ang co co coconut oil daw ay uh, nakaka-cause ng sakit sa puso. Tapos, meron pang naging viral uh, si German a researcher, si Dr. Karen Michael, sabi niya ang coconut oil daw ay poison. Ang mga talagang nangunguna na nagdi-debunk uh, were not from the coconut industry. Napansin ko, yung mga talagang nasa, they give out videos, lectures, may YouTube, like for example si Dr. Eric Berg, si Dr. Asim Hotra, who is one of the top cardiologists sa UK, uh, of course, si Dr. Bruce Five. Uh, maraming mga doctor and scientists are also low-carb researchers and scientists. Also si Dr. Jeff Bolek. Uh, sila yun yung kasabi na ito ay propaganda lang, hindi totoo. And they were the ones talaga doing a lot of research on uh, saturated fat as a whole at uh, pinapabulaanan nila yung mga uh, sinasabi na uh, malitaw o hindi maganda sa ating kalusugan yung mga saturated fat kaya ng coconut oil. So, time na, na, na intrigue ako. And so, I really studied a lot uh, about this. Nag-review tayo ng ating mga pinag-aralan dati. That was uh, more than three years ago. In fact, three years na kung hindi kumakain kahit isang butil ng kanin, isang butil ng sugar, uh, from 215 pounds, I dropped my weight to uh, by 50 pounds, uh, I'm now in my ideal BMI. Nag-lockdown, kasi before lockdown, palagi ako nasa gym. Uh, Nag-lockdown na, almost two years sa tayo. Na-maintain pa rin yung, yung weight ko. Hindi mo ako nag-gym. So, nakataka ako, yung fat, yung liver enzymes ko, SGPT, SGOT, uh, na-normalize. Uh, yung blood pressure ko, titignan mo, at any time, palaging... 120 over 80, 110 over 70, ganun. Uh, dati rin madalas ako magka-gout. Ngayon, nagpagtaka ako. Uh, hindi na ako madalas magka-gout. And parang I'm at the peak of my health now. So, ang bonus na lang na may, na may maintain pa yung, yung, yung weight ko. Which is, uh, I for myself, kasi it's easy... It's difficult to understand yung health benefits ng low carb unless andun ka na eh. Mahirap makita kung gaano ka high carb ang ating society unless nandun ka sa supermarket at kailangan mong pumili ng 20 grams max o carb o no carb foods. Makita mo sa supermarket unless pumunta ka sa, sa mga aisle na andun yung mga karne o yung gulay. Lahat is talag makita mo parang may tricks na nagugulat ka, nalilinawanagan ka. Ng ating society pala ay talagang uh, talagang carb-centric. At ito rin yung talagang punot dulo o, ng ating uh, mga chronic diseases. So, and uh, that, that is why I have become psycho. This is a, ano ah, this is a parang phenomenon na for a simple, wala ka namang inumin. Sabihin, this is a way of eating. Uh, pamar pamaraan ng pagkain. Hindi ka inumin ng, ng kung ano-ano. Uh, you will just uh, minimize 
kung isang macronutrient na nag-cost nun. And at makita mo na, yun nga, it's at the center of chronic diseases kasi isa-isang isa nawawala eh, isa-isang nag-donormalize. Even yung mga picos o yung mga, mga kilala ko pa, yung, may, yung mga benign prostatic hyperplasia, yung mga growth na uh, uh, cysts, everything. So makita mo at the root of so many of our chronic diseases is really insulin resistance. At ang yes. pinakapunot dulo ng insulin resistance ay yung talagang chronic, excessive na pagkain ng carbohydrate. So, ganun pala, no? Hindi lang pala basta-basta na uh, just because you know that coconut oil is not bad, pwede ka mag-take nito. And you can already, it's like a magic pill na yun na talaga yung, yung end-all, be-all, kumbaga. So, itatanong ko lang po, nung before kayo, nag, uh, nung nagka-fatty liver kayo, nagtate kayo ng coconut oil non during yes. those times. And yes. now, nawala na kayong fatty liver, nagtatake pa rin kayo ng coconut oil. Yes, ma 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 more, siguro twice, three times. Uh, a day, mas a day. Mag Pero, day, uh. so ano yung difference between nung panahon na may fatty liver kayo at ngayon na walang fatty liver, given na parehong <laughs> may coconut oil? Ano yung Tama. nagkaiba? Oh, the only difference, ay talagang wala ako halos na carbohydrate intake. Oh. Walang kanin, walang tinapay, wala asukal. Kaya nga napaka- yung context ng sinasabi na masama ang pagkain ng fat ay nasa dapat tamang context eh. Kasi ang, ang pagbuo po ng fat ay insulin din ang, ang may trabaho eh. Yung uh, synthesis of fat ay kailangan din may insulin. Kumain ka ng sisig na masarap tapos may dalawang only rice ka na two cups of rice. So talaga, mag-spike ang insulin mo, mag-spike ang blood sugar mo, mag-spike ang insulin to bring down yung blood sugar. At dahil meron kang insulin, which is the master hormone, ito yung responsible for fat synthesis. Nakita niya na, o may fatty acids ka mula sa sisig. So yun ay kinoconvert ulit sa fat. You have, so you have fat coming mula doon sa kanin, gagawing taba. Kasi, di ba, stored energy ang taba. At the same time, meron ka na namang fat mula doon sa fatty food na kinain mo. Gagawa rin yung taba. But kung kinain mo lang ay uh, taba lang, coconut oil lang, uh, sisig lang without the carbohydrates. So ngayon, kasi ang fat is energy. So it's a, it's so source of energy natin ay ang glucose or ang fat. In the absence of glucose, so the body will use up yung available fat, whether dun sa kinain natin na uh, taba as energy, or kung wala naman taba, our body will conver convert our own fat stores into energy. Okay. Kasi yung hindi po na, nakukuha ng ibang practitioners who are just pro-glucose and anti-fats is that actually, yung taba kapag walang insulin, automatically mako-convert siya into energy. But as long as merong insulin coming from carbohydrates, coming from glucose, yung taba po, it will be preserved. Isisigya ng katawan mo. Uh -oh. In times of famine, in times of fasting, but sa uh -oh. panahon ngayon, na araw-araw, merong mga commercial sa radyo, sa TV, sa internet, bawal magutom. So of course, hindi-hindi ka talaga magkakaroon ng panahon na ma-burn mo yan. Because you're always eating, especially pinopromote ng marami, ang small frequent meals. Ano yung ginagawa ng small frequent meals? Yung insulin mo, mataas, papunta pa baba na saran, kumain ka na naman. So mataas, parate hindi siya bumababa. So actually, that is the reason why hindi kayo nagpa-fat burning. At kahit gano'n pa kaganda, kahit, kahit pa healthy ang coconut oil, oil per se, if you pair it with bad carbs, hindi nyo maximize yung benefit na yan. Okay? Although meron yung research ngayon, even with high carb, those saturated fats can be protective in a certain amount. Okay? Hindi natin sinasabi na mag-high carb ka at high fat, pero magkakaroon actually siya ng a little protective mechanism. But the safest to optimize your health is actually to do low carb and you can maximize the benefit of fats and we are always talking about fats so 
Sir, can you elaborate more? Ano po ba yung fats? May pagkakaiba po ba sila sa lipid and oil? Kasi usually, we use them simultaneously or interchangeably. So, ano po ba talaga sila? So, ang, uh, ang fat o oil o lipid ay isa lang actually yung kanyang uh, uh, chemical name. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin na triglyceride. Ang triglyceride, ay uh, may tatlong fatty acids na nakakabit sa isang molecule ng ng glycerol. So, uh, nagkakaiba lang yung sa mga fat dahil iba-ibang klase. So, meron tayong apat na klase ng fat. Una, yung saturated fats. Ito yung mga, ang pinaka-saturated fat kasi sa mundo, coconut oil eh, 92% uh, saturation. Pero meron din tayong ang taba ng baka, uh, talo, uh, mga 40-50% saturated fat, and the rest, madami rin siyang mono-saturated fat. Uh, yung ding uh, palm stearin, saturated fat din. Ang pinaka-saturated fat ay coconut oil. Uh, second, meron tayong uh, tinatawag na mono-unsaturated fat. Ito yung mga gaya ng uh, olive oil, avocado oil, uh, pili oil, ito yung hindi siya as heat stable nung saturated fat kasi yung carbon structure niya may, may isang uh, double bond. Uh, but at the same time, uh, hindi naman siya kasing unstable nung pangatlong klase na ito yung tinatawag na polyunsaturated fat. Ang polyunsaturated fat ay ito yung pinaka uh, not heat stable. Kasi so, pag may init, may heat, ay madaling masira yung kanyang structure. Ang mga klase ng mga polyunsaturated fat ay ang um, uh, canola, uh, corn oil, soybean oil, uh, cotton seed oil, sunflower oil, o yung mga seed oils na tinatawag. Napaka-unstable nito sa, sa heat. Uh, in fact, kung bibili kayo ng, uh, sa supermarket, kuha lang kayo ng isang bote ng uh, corn oil o soybean oil. Tingnan nyo yung ingredients niya sa label kasi they are obliged to declare kung ano yung nutrition doon. Makakita nyo na meron siyang uh, trans fat na more or less mga less than 2%. Ang trans fat ay toxic. Ang trans fat ay ibaban na ng WHO sa buong mundo by 2024. At uh, yun, yung pala yung pang-apat, ito yung trans fat. Ang trans fat naman ay isang fake oil kasi nga yung mga polyunsaturated fats gaya ng corn oil, soybean oil ay very uh, unstable, napakababa ng kanyang shelf life. So ginawa ng mga pabrika ay gumawa sila ng proseso by introducing hydrogen para yung mga polyunsaturated fats na yan ay maging stable. Pero as a result, gumawa sila ng toxic uh, uh, byproduct yung mga trans fat na tinatawag. Pero, ibig sabihin, dun sa mga nabibili pa natin ng mga corn oil, soybean oil, even without hydrogenation, tingnan lang sa bottom, hindi mo hindi hydrogenate siya, refined bleach and deodorized lang siya eh. Bakit nagkaka-trans fat na siya? Dahil nga, in the high heat, in the refining, bleaching, and deodorization, ay na-convert na kaagad yung ibang uh, fats niya into trans fat. That is how un unstable to yung mga seed oils na high in omega-6 fats. So, in the, kaya in the order of, of importance, kung any, any heat involved, like pagluluto, sauteing, ano, kung deep frying, ang, we have to use yung talagang saturated fat lang. Uh, coconut oil, palm oil, palm stearin, talo, talo or, or beef fat. Ang use in moderation, ito yung mga monounsaturated fats, olive oil, uh, kaya hindi naman magandang gamitin ang olive oil sa mga deep frying, best ito for drizzling sa mga salad oil, and pinaka-i-avoid talaga natin na oils ay yung mga omega-6 oils or seed oils, kaya ng corn oil, soybean oil, uh, canola oil. So yan yung apat na ano, saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, Paul and saturated at uh, trans fat. Okay, so uh, thank you for that clarification, no? So para mas ma-imagine nila, yung saturated fats po, 
eto po yun mostly natutulog sila sa maginaw na oh. environment. Tama po Mayroon ba yun? Ito yung... Uh, oh, uh, nandyan. May example. Kasi, oh, tulog. Tulog ng coconut oil yan. Na. Kaya okay. very uh, understandable na ang mga tao natin, kababayan natin, ay nukun, pag ininom ko to, ito mangyari sa ugat ko. <laughs> Ma-stroke ako, ma-heart ma attack. Kasi oh. buo, oh, nagsasebo. Kaya ang ginawa na, ng mga manufacturer nga natin, yung kasi sa supermarket, malamig eh. So ayaw na lang makita ng mga namimili na namumuo. So the, the lahat, mapansin nyo, mga coconut oil natin ay nasa Solid. opaque, opaque, opaque yes. na packaging para hindi na lang oh. makita na namumuo. Pero ang At, katotohanan po, dito pa lang sa mouth natin, ay nagsagay na. mag-liquify kasi ang ating body temperature ba 36.2, 36.5 degrees Celsius ang coconut oil will ang uh, solidification point mga 21 degrees Celsius sa so, mouth pa lang natin nagli-liquify na nag-start na rin yung kanyang uh, digestion emulsification kasi meron tayong mga enzyme na kagad sa ating mga saliva yung mga tinatawag natin mga sa, sa uh, lingua lipase i-start na kagad i-breakdown yan. Tapos, yung bile natin, biglang sasaya yung ating gallbladder kasi yung bile natin, ang purpose nyan is really to emulsify yung fat. Pasaya siya. So, andyan na yung, yung taba. So, it will start the emulsification. Andyan na yun yung pancreatic enzyme natin na talagang digest na siya. And ngayon, sisimula na yung proseso na gawin yung fat as energy uh, para sa ating end para sa ating ding uh, sa for good heart function ang ating lungs lung surfactant is made up of saturated fat ang bawat isa we, we know we have 37 trillion cells and ang bawat isa sa cell yung cell membrane natin is really composed of uh, lipids of fat a uh, 50% yan ay saturated fat dahil nga ganoon eh kasi we are warm blooded animals So, 36.2-365 degrees Celsius. Kung ang taba ng ating cell wall ay yung mga polyunsaturated fats na madaling nasisira sa init, oxidation. Kung mga parang pag bumabagyo, di ba? Kung ang bahay mo ay bahay kubo lang, uh, mga kawayan lang ang uh, nilagay mo sa uh, pawid, sa bubong, napakadaling masira pag may bagyo. So, ganun din ang katawan natin. We are warm-blooded uh, mammals o matas ang ating temperature. Kaya by evolution, by nature, ang cell wall natin ay we have to umaga sa bahay, gawa sa kongkreto. Hindi madaling masira pag may uh, kasi we have uh, oxidation galing sa hangin na may oxygen. We have a lot of mga free radicals. Uh, so, yun ang kahalagahan nitong ating mga uh, saturated fats. So maraming salamat po Sir Marco no. Kaya no wonder na marami pong pinagkakamalan kayong doktor. Kasi actually the way you explain it is actually way better than most doctors when it comes to uh, the process of how we actually digest fats and how it comes inside our body. In fact, I know other doctors personally na sila mismo ay takot din sa saturated fats even if In biochemistry, actually, wala namang sinasabing ganyan. Biochemistry is one of our subjects in medical school na wherein yung mga basic din about, about nutrition ay pinag-uusapan. However, as we reach, kapag pumunta na po kami ng uh, disease-specific na analysis, doon na napupunta yung guidelines. Yun yung sinabi nyo, one of the American guidelines, food guidelines na nakikita natin, ay nagkakaroon, nagsasabi ng mga certain 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 uh, na propaganda na nagsasabi na, nakata na nakakatakot talaga yung mga trans fat. And to add to that, no, totoo po yun, yung sabi ni Sir Marco na kapag kumain tayo ng mga certain not stable and toxic fats, okay, para nating nilalagyan, para nating nilalagyan ng extra para natin nilalagyan ng low cost kung baga, okay? Low cost o mumurahing 
structure yung ating cell wall. And bakit tayo matatakot sa saturated fats when a very large part of our own body is actually made of saturated fats. Okay? At saka importante po to yung about temperature kasi kahit tulog pa yung mantika na yan, the moment it enters our body, sabi nga ni Sir Marco, simula pa lang sa mouth natin, it will already start liquefying. And it's because meron tayong core body temperature at hindi yan maproproseso unless it will first reach our core body temperature. So importante po yan na malaman natin. So maraming salamat po for emphasizing that. Okay? And with this naman, we should go next to our uh, full understanding with uh, saturated fats, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. So dito I think nagko-confuse yung mga tao. Monounsaturated, it's uh, somewhat generally considered as good fats. Olive oil, uh, avocado oil, and yung sinasabi, I think one of the parang worstly labeled na, na healthy oil would be canola. And I, when I look at their information index, nutri nutrient index, no? yung nutrition facts niya, mataas, meron pala siyang mataas na monounsaturated oil. So dun sila nag parang nag-capitalize nag, uh, sa mataas na unsaturated oil. But hindi nila sinasabi sa inyo na mataas din yung kanyang polyunsaturated oil o oh, polyunsaturated fatty acids or yung tinatawag nating PUFA. Okay? So actually, just because hindi siya natutulog sa maginaw na mall, ay healthy na ito. Actually, our body doesn't work that easily. Pwedeng-pwede na kahit hindi siya natutulog, it's in liquid form it can still induce inflammation. Okay? So ano po ba yung epekto ng mga fats na ito? Little by little sa ating katawan, the moment they enter them. So uh, yung ang saturated, una-una, yung, yung fat uh, in general, ay uh, di ba naman siya natin yung ating 37 trillion cells. Uh, so ang cell membrane nila ay gawa sa saturated fat and also mono unsaturated fat. Ang ating brain, is a uh, 60% made up of fat. Uh, third, yung mga makumain ka ng salad, yung mga veggies, leafy greens, kung hindi mo lalagyan na ng oil of fat, hindi yung mas ma-absorb. So, fat uh, increases, optimizes the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. Ito yung uh, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Uh, fourth, Yung fat is a source of energy. It is a cleanest source of energy. Kung baga sa atin, may solar ka. Di ba? Wala kang bineburn na gasoline, diesel. Uh, para gumawa ka ng kuryente, ang solar mo is mula sa, sa sun. Ganun din ang ginagawa ng fat as a source of energy. If carbohydrates is also a source of energy, but it increases your blood sugar, it spikes your insulin, uh, yung high blood sugar, will cause glycation. Yung mga AGEs, uh, uh, advanced glycated end products, uh, nagkakos ng pagbabara sa arteries. Oxidation, yung platelet coagulation. In fact, ang metabolism ng fat is 15% more efficient. So it, use, it uses less oxygen para ma-burn na yung ating fat. Uh, kung kakain tayo ng glucose as a source of energy, Ang, ang excessive consumption, kasi isang teaspoon lang naman ng blood sugar ang kailangan natin, and it's not even essential in the first place, i-convert ko yan, kumang tayo isang kaning, kaning, isang tasang kanin, i-convert ko yan into uh, glycogen and then fat. Pero if we use, if we consume uh, a lot of fats, so gagawin siyang energy, ay burn siya, at kung meron pang additional, ito nga yung ketones na tinatawag. Kaya kung maraming tayong fat, yung sa urinalysis, mga gata mo, nagpa-plus na yung ketones nila eh. So, this is how the body and the ketones is also a source of fuel and ex and uh, ex excess nyan is, is disposed of in the in the urine as uh, acetoacetate or yung hininga na keto breath na acetone o yung sa sweat natin, yung sa keto rush na acetone na skin, skin irritant. So, yung fat as a source of energy is talaga much more efficient. Yung ating uh, lungs, na, yung lungs surfactant is made up of saturated fat. 
yung ating ating puso which has to function 24/7 it prefers uh, saturated fat as a energy source instead of carbohydrates yung ating uh, endocrine gland hormones uh, uh, pituitary gland uh, thyroid sa so pancreas adrenals sa uh, testes ovaries kailangan din ng saturated fat in order to balance our hormones yung liver natin, yung may mga nakainom ng mga toxin, mga acetaminophen, alcohol, yung saturated fat nagpo-protect sa, sa damage sa, sa liver natin. Eh. So, napakadami at immune system natin. So, infra, it primes our white blood cells to fight itong mga pathogens from bacteria, from fungi, uh, from uh, virus. In fact, gumawa nga ang gobyerno natin ng ng pag-aaral sa COVID, yung sa SARS-CoV-2 virus, na napakadama in inum na na virgin coconut oil. And mula sa pag-aaral, talagang uh, it was successful in they all had the 100% recovery sa mga mild symptoms. Uh, and it was uh, scientific evidence na yung saturated fat like coconut oil, lalo na yung mga medium chain fats, are able to kill ito mga pathogenic uh, microorganisms. So yan po, napakadaming uh, biologic importance ng saturated fat natin. Kaya, kaya wag tayong matakot kung kakain tayo o gagamit tayo ng coconut na cooking oil o taba ng baka. Uh, so yun ba yung may doctor, Dr. Navarro? Sabi niya, Ebola lo a day keeps the ailments away. O kasi ang talo, yung talo, taba ng baka, has the lowest omega-6 fat in the world. 0.7% lang omega-6 niya. Ang coconut oil kasi 1.4% eh. Pero ang uh, taba ng, ng baka uh, is composed of just saturated, monounsaturated fat. Plus, you get all the nut nutrition, the nutrients from uh, yung sa ruminants, gaya ng baka, na andyan yung complete amino acid profile, and dyan yung carnitine, and yan yung mga vitamins, minerals. So, it's a combination eh. This is how talaga uh, we are, yung na-importance, the benefit, and the advantages sa ating kalusugan pag tayo ay kumakain ng mga saturated fats. Yes, I really believe that, no? So, noon, and I think, no, I, I feel that I am one of the lucky ones, actually, yung family namin. Kasi kahit noong panahon pa na hindi pa namin alam talaga about low-carb and nutrition, mahilig na talaga kami sa saturated fats. Yung paborito talaga namin, and yung mom namin, uh, she was been, she has been, uh, ano, no, warned by so many na huwag kumain ng maraming taba. but kumakain talaga siya ng taba? At saka yung coconut oil na nilulong luto kapag masarap daw yung niluluto humihigop talaga siya noon ng after yung pinirituhan so noon yung mga tao talaga takot na takot kapag nakikita siya pero by the age of 60 63 until kahit pa tumataba siya because she was still on high carb then pero always wala po siyang never siyang nagkaroon ng hypertension o nagkaroon ng kahit anong sakit at yung mga taong nagwa-warn sa kanya especially she was actually taking the worst combination hindi yan kakain ng lechon ng walang asin so dapat kapag may lechon may asin yang kasama only that nangyari ito together with high carb kaya nagkaroon siya ng gallbladder stone pero actually when you take fats alone without the carbohydrates gallbladder stone will not happen Insta in, in fact, yung gallbladder stone po na mention kanina ni Sir Marco, kapag kumakain ka ng taba, say for example, a coconut oil, it will actually activate your gallbladder to contract and then mag-express siya, maglalabas siya ng kanyang bile acid na nandun. Because that bile acid, tawag namin mag-emulsify o i-coat niya yung kinain mong taba para maiproseso ito at magamit ng ating katawan for its important functions. So that alone is actually helping you prevent gallbladder stone formation kasi hindi nagstastagnate yung bile, yung bile acid sa loob ng gallbladder. So it's always being flushed out, cleansed, and then bago na naman. Kailan nagkakaroon ng gallbladder stone? Actually, when you fully avoid fats, nagkakaroon ng stagnation o fat stranding or, or bile stasis, meaning nandyan lang siya. So over time, together with a high-carb meal with inflammation, namumuo. 
from bile stasis, nagkakaroon ng uh, cholesterol para siyang nagiging mat mat thicken, and then later on, it goes into stone formation. But without carbohydrates, that can just be freely replaced no? and replenished over time. So you will have a healthy gallbladder and even liver. At yung isang mindset kasi na ibang tao, akala nila yung taba na kanilang kinakain, automatic yun yung taba na magiging magpapatas taba sa kanila. And true enough, sa mga research, yun din po nakita nila. But hindi nila tinitingnan kung gano'n rin karami yung sugar na pinagkakakain ng kanilang subjects o ng kanilang participants. So those are actually very, very biased research. When you do research, try to make sure you are overall looking at the context. And we are happy now na sabi nga ni Sir Marco na meron ng research ngayon who are really looking into isolated low-carb nutrition na para make sure that the data you are getting is hindi confounded by by high carb intake and we see now that high fat intake actually is very good and could even be protective for our system but of course no may may condition yan kung maga high fat ka low carb talaga hindi pwedeng high fat at high carb, okay? Yun po yung importante dyan. Of course, pag-uusapan natin more about that and more resource speakers this upcoming Low Carb Gone 2021, July 24 to 25. It's actually going to be a very productive day. Akalain nyo, uh, 8 hours, full 8 hours, 8 to 5 ba yan? Oh, full 8 hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you will have 16 Get resource speakers talking about the benefits of low carb nutrition, of fasting, how to do it right, at para po mawala talaga yung takot natin. And speaking of fear, fat phobia, saan nga ba ito nagsimula, sir? Kasi noon, nung mga kanununuan natin, kumakain naman parate ng taba ng baboy, taba ng iyog. In fact, yun nga yung ginagamit nating oil noon, yung merong delicacy sa... Uh, si Kihor, yung tinatawag nilang torta, para siyang local mamon. And yung original recipe, they use lard or, or taba ng baboy as, as one of their major ingredients. But ngayon, lahat tayo natatakot na. And to think the the incidence of heart attack before na grabe, walang control yung pagkain ng lana, ng coconut oil, and all that, as compared ngayon na marami yung natatakot, yet mas marami yung may heart attacks ngayon and other heart problems. Ano po ba yung basihan? Bakit nagkakaroon ng fat phobia? Ah, napakagandang tanong niya na, Doc Grace. Kaya dun sa uh, presentation ko sa July 24, ay talagang we need to go into the history. Bakit ba nagkaganyan? Pati tayo mga Pinoy ay tinakot tayo sa, sa, mga, sa ating sariling coconut oil. Eh talagang at dito sa mga countries along the equator kasama ang India, South Pacific, countries Hawaii, etc., South America, lahat yan has been have been using coconut oil for thousands and thousands of years. Kaya pag uh, pupuntahan natin yung yung history niya. So, nagsimula nung 1911 kasi ang Procter and Gamble ay nakagawa ng proseso na yung cotton seed oil na isang lubricant sa mga engine, sa mga makina mo ay uh, gumagamit ka ng ng cotton seed oil. Uh, ang may nagawa sa lang process ang tawag kay hydrogenation. Ah uh, pag ginagamit yung, yung cotton seed oil na siya, nagiging mas uh, stable at sa halip na gawin siyang albawa sabon ng PNG ay minarket siya as a shortening. Ito yung tinatawag na, na Crisco. So hydrogenated fat siya. Uh, gawa sa cotton seed oil at ito nga yung gumawa ng mga trans fats kaya mula dun talagang na-explode na yung mga trans fat eh, yung mga hydrogenated fats noong 1960s ay yun yung binigyan ng sugar industry sa Amerika ang isang maliit na organization ang tawag sa organization noong 1960s ay American Heart Association ng 1.7 million dollars para to shift the blame away from sugar at para i-blame ang saturated fat as a cause of, cause of heart disease. At noong 1980s, nagpalabas si Ansel Keys, yung tinatawag na Seven Countries Study, na sinabi niya na bansa na to, Seven Countries, ay tumaas ang pagkain ng saturated fat 
fat, uh, tumasa inyo ka na ng sakit sa puso. Ngayon ang tanong, bakit seven countries lang? Bakit yung meron tayong tinatawag na French paradox na napakataas ng saturated fat intake sa France, uh, steak, uh, butter, uh, pero ang baba na kanilang saturated fat. Ang buong, Euro, there, there's also a European paradox na the higher the saturated fat, the lower the uh, incidence of cardiovascular disease. O yung mga tribes, yung mga Inuit, Eskimos, Rendili, uh, uh, some mga Polynesians, where they, they were eating 60% as a uh, saturated fat na mula sa coconut oil, mula sa mga animal fats. At dito mismo sa, sa Pilipinas, we were eating uh, a lot of uh, saturated fats from coconut oil. Ay, nung mga before the 1900s, di naman kilala pa sa atin yung mga sakit sa puso. Kahit sa ngayon, yung mga magsasaka ng mga coconut farmers, hindi masyado sila nakakasakot sa puso. Inapakataas sa consumption nila ng ng saturated fat. So yung seven countries study noong 1980s, 1970s ni Ansel Keys, ay ganun nga, ang flow niya ay seven countries lang na pinili niya para mag-align dun sa kanyang teorya. At hindi yung mga data from so many other countries. So ito po, yan yung, uh, dyan nagsimula kung paano nagkaroon ng diet heart hypothesis. Sinabi nila na dahil dito sa seven countries ta ni the Ansel Keys ay ang cost ng sakit sa puso ay saturated fat at cholesterol. Pero 1960s, 70s, 80s na yan, ang first dietary guideline ay nilabas noong 1980. 2021 na ngayon. We already have overwhelming evidence at marami tayong mga, yung mga talagang meta-analysis Yung lahat ng mga pag-aral, uh, observational studies, uh, yung mga randomized control trials, dating back to the time of Ansel Keys, which are saying na these have been talaga very flawed. Uh, walang isang study na nagsasabi ng saturated fat ay nag-cost ng sakit sa puso. Kahit yung, diba, yung common sense, we have uh, 20 million fatalities in the world for cardiac cardiovascular disease. Eh, bakit? May teorya na tayo eh. Sinabi na natin na saturated fat cholesterol ay cause ng heart disease. Bakit? Ganun pa. Nag-explode pa yung namamatay sa atin sa sakit sa puso. So, i-discuss po natin yung part siya ng ating uh, discuss po sa talk sa July 24, yung saturated fat po or friend. Thank you so much po for that, sir. No, and for those naman na hindi masyadong familiar how research work. So usually, meron magsa study, tapos kung ano makikita nila, eto yung ipapalabas na result. At based on this result, gagawa sila ng resolution. Okay? So dito, yung problem, no, ngayon, grabe na ka strict yung pag publish ng isang article. Kasi kapag nag publish ka nun, dapat talaga meron kang ethical consideration. Kung meron nag fund sa yo, Kung meron kasi, for example, may nag-sponsor sa'yo na, na isang, isang industry. So, pwedeng malaman ng tao. So, ah, baka ano ito, disclaimer niya, may nag-sponsor sa kanya. So, baka alam natin, medyo biased siya in the first place. Noong unang panahon po, hindi nilalagay yung disclaimer. So, walang alam yung lahat. At pinila, yung seven country study na po yun, actually, it was funded by the sugar industry. Kasi yung totoong nakita na nila is yung mataas na consumption ng sugar ay talagang directly related to heart attack, to diabetes, to obesity. Pero malaki na na-invest nila with sugar eh. So hindi pwedeng siraan yung sugar. So kailangan, somebody has to take the blame. At ano yung ginawa nila? Ni Inopen up nila yung mga namatay sa heart disease, tiningnan nila yung mga ugat, and lo and behold, taba, maraming taba na nakabara sa kanilang ugat at sa kanilang puso. And so, therefore, I conclude, yung pagkain ng taba ang nagkakaroon ng, ang nagkakalid to atherosclerosis and pag-block ng lahat ng yan. But they missed one part of the equation, which is, ang taba po ay inosente, Actually, wala siyang pakialam sa walls ng, sa, ng ating arteries. Lulutang lang siya. And it will become energy. And it will serve its purpose. But magkakaroon siya ng possible increase in contribution sa heart attack kapag ito po ay merong bossing. At yung bossing na yan ay ang insulin. 
at kapag nandyan si insulin na master regulatory hormone at parati nang siya nandyan all year round, it can lead to inflammation. So yung inflammation po, magkakaroon ng gasgas. Okay? Parating nagagasgas yung inyong pipe o parang tubo which is your arteries at kapag nagagasgas yan, yung mabait na fats, itatry niyang tabunan. Okay? Itatry niya tanang because it's part of healing. It's actually a healing molecule din sa ating katawan. Pero sa sige-sige po na injury sa ating blood vessels, of course, it blocks up. But the root cause there is actually not the fats. Kasi yung fats, kinagawa lang niya yung trabaho niya. Yung problema dyan is yung injury in the first place na nangyari within the lining of our arteries and veins. no? So yung sinasabi natin dito, mostly arteries at saka kung i-imagine nyo po, every time you eat sugar, para nyo pong wipe yung inyong arteries ng sandpaper. Okay? Imagine kung gano ka parang yung skin nyo, parati yung ginaganyan ng sandpaper. Okay? So, anong mangyayari? It will bleed, it will become inflamed, mamamagayan, and so, kailangan siyang tabunan. And sa pagtabo na yan, sa pag na yan, part of that is the fat process, which is again, not the culprit. The root cause really is the injury, inflammation coming from sugar and coming from insulin. And meron akong gusto i-highlight, sir. Sabi mo kanina, one teaspoon lang yung kailangan natin na sugar and it doesn't even need to to get to uh, to come from the food we eat. Okay? Totoo po 'yan. Yung 70 to 100 or 99 milligrams per dl natin na normal blood sugar. Actually, kung ilalap mo sila, 1 teaspoon na po yan, 4 grams lang po yan ng, ng sugar, ng white sugar. No wonder na kapag kumain kayo ng isang tinapay, double, triple yung pagtaas ng inyong blood sugar because isang pandesal is actually equivalent to 4 to 5 teaspoons of white sugar. So, but tayo as Filipino and usually we have this American dream we have we always look upon those in the in the western countries as superior than us so we somewhat follow their guidelines even our food intake our noon wala naman mga white bread dito ang anong tawag sa white bread actually sa amin tawag namin yan noon is pan americano okay but ngayon sliced bread white bread but it's actually not part of the usual diet ng Pinoy sana. But of course, we have so much else to talk about. And I'm so sorry, medyo konti na lang yung panahon natin. But I hope you learned something from this episode and enough for you to encourage your family if you are already convinced that low-carb nutrition is actually the way to go. Better invite them in our Low Carb Con 2021. Kahit isang, yung suggestion actually namin, kahit isa lang sa family ang mag-enroll, ang, ma, ang maging part ng Low Carb Con, and then make it a family event. Actually, we are looking into making it as a family gathering sa panahon na yan. Ilalagay siguro namin sa projector, tapos mag invite kami ng family and friends para sila maka-witness din. Hindi po kami magdadamo. Actually, okay lang para kayong magpa-pay-per-view. But of course, ha, ilibre nyo na sila. Okay, this is going to be the most, uh, I think, value for money that you can spend on. Kasi the learning that you will get here can just be the needed life-changing event ng inyong buhay. If it changed the life of Sir Marco na nasa industry na nga, ng coconut industry, it changed my life. Even I studied that as a doctor. And uh, with this knowledge, it improved our health noon. Kapag nagsasakit yung pasyente, gamot, gamot, gamot lang. But you don't really know kung gagaling talaga siya. You'll just know the symptoms will just be, be there. But addressing the problems at the root cause, eto talaga yung goal natin. So I hope you will see you there. And sir, before we end po, ano po yung parang pinaka gusto mong i-take away nila? Para kung meron mang magsasabi na wag na kayong kumain yan. Oy, nakapagkakita pa lang ng ano, putok-batok yan. Of course, no? Uh, of, of the three, I just want to clarify. Saturated fat is okay. Monounsaturated fat is okay. Uh, polyunsaturated fat, okay, is somewhat okay at minimum, very minimal lang because omega-6 is essential. Pero sa dami-dami ng omega-6, no-brainer, hindi na ang kailangan natin iwasan si omega-6 because we are actually 
we are actually consuming more of that. And tama po ba na yung trans fat are also somewhat incorporated sa mga seed oils? So yung canola, yes. yung ano, kimi na market nila as mono and polyunsaturated eh. But hindi nila sinasabi na it's actually a combination. So what we actually yes. need to be very careful are those na nagmamarket ng heart healthy pero meron palang hidden na trans fat. Totoo po ba yes. yun? Oh, mag-best friend diyan eh, trans fat tsaka poly UFA, polyunsaturated fat kasi nga napaka yung mga naturally occurring polyunsaturated fats. Ah uh, kasi ano ba yung sa mga corn o soya, yung naturally occurring and hindi refined kasi may kasama naman yung antioxidants eh. The more unsaturated, the more antioxidants na binibigay ng nature, it could be from uh, vitamin A, the coffee rolls, polyphenols. Ang nangyayari kasi we have talaga refined, yung refining process removes all these uh, antioxidants and yung mga high heat temperature. So kaya the, the more unprocessed an oil is, no, virgin, except virgin olive oil na hindi kita gumamit ng init, napakadami yung antioxidants niya. Uh, na it makes the oil more stable, yung virgin coconut oil, na-maintain yung kanyang mga polyphenols na which further makes it more stable. Eh yung mga seed oils not high in omega-6 na nirefine mo na, ininit mo na up to 240 degrees, gumawa ka na ng madaming trans fats. Pag niluto mo, gagawa ka pa ng mga toxic aldehydes. Hindi, puma, hindi pa pumapasok sa katawan natin, ay meron ka na kagad parang, parang firecrackers. Ito yung mga free radicals eh na napakadaming uh, domino reaction and when it napunta sa katawan natin na ano yung mga series of, uh, from free radicals kina, kina cannibalize yung ibang mga stable molecule so ganyan po, kaya the more saturated fat it is, the more heat stable it is the more healthy para sa atin Thank you so much po. Maraming salamat. Pero may isa po po ang last na nag-question dito pagbibigyan po ba natin and sure. how about daw po palm oil? Oh, palm oil is also a tropical oil kasi ang palm oil eh, na mataas, di, saturated, mono unsaturated, uh, yung saturated fat niya, ito yung palm kernel oil, ay yung kanyang mono saturated, ito yung palm olein. So part siya nung uh, both saturated and mono unsaturated. Ang hindi lang maganda, ang kantis na rin, exact na rin mag-ban ng, ng palm oil ay doon sa environmental degradation na yung mga climate change sa pang malak malaking issue sa atin worldwide eh. Na biro mo, the whole of Malaysia, punta ka sa isang banda, punta ka doon sa may Singapore part ng Malaysia, halos lahat tanim ay palm oil. Sinira na lahat ng mga kagubatan nila para tam na ng palm oil. So yung first. And second, merong kasi nagagawa siya na byproduct. Uh, ito yung tinatawag na 3-MCPD, 3-monochloropropane diol, na isang carcinogen. So, may, dapat may limitation kasi ito eh. May limit eh. Yung mga importation sa Pilipinas sa atin, hindi nila nilalagay ng limit. I've been telling our part of agriculture to look into that eh. Kasi sa Europe, uh, carcinogen siya. Na mat, pinakamataas sa palm oil, pinakamataas din dun sa soy sauce, yung sa toyo na galing sa yung hydrolyzed uh, process, hindi yung, hindi yung naturally brewed soy sauce gaya ng kikuman tumataas yung 3-MCPD. So, yun po yung issue ko, yung issue doon sa palm oil tsaka sa palm oil. Isa yung sa environmental degradation at second, yung very high content ng 3-MCPD. Yes. And it has something to do talaga with with that, no? Sabi nga ng brother ko, he works as a seaman. Uh, one of their cargo, nagdadala sila ng ng palm oil. Tapos, yung unprocessed palm oil, sobrang baho daw. As in, iba daw po yung, ba, yung sobrang mabaho daw po yun. So, mm. you can just imagine how much processing it needs para lang mm. to become ganyan. Mm. Yung coconut po, mabango. Yung natural yeah. na coconut. Kahit ilagay mo, ibilad mo lang sa araw yan, yun na talaga yung bango niya. Uh -huh. And what they just do to refine is just remove the, yung aromatic na part of that. And it's still mm. the same healthy coconut oil. Yes. Okay, so I Yung palm oil din kasi, in fact, it has one of the highest contents nung tocopherol na potent na antioxidant. Pag hindi siya processed, mm. ang dapat, ang natural color kasi ng palm oil, red eh. Red palm oil, oh. madami. Yung mga ka carotins, carotenoids, mm. vitamin A. 
pero niya nawawala siya eh. When, when oh. you refine, process, deodorize, nawawala yung mga naturally occurring antioxidants niya. Mm-mm. At saka, we have a friend no, na nagbisita sa amin lately na his business is about supplying oils. So, pero alam nyo ba na hindi sila nagbebenta ng coconut oil? Kasi daw, ayaw ng mga nagbebenta ata because they are afraid to use it kasi puti daw as compared sa ibang oil na yellow. Pero hindi natin nga alam na totoo nga pala the real coconut oil is really clear, clear white. Kaya nga, oh, kaya nga, kaya nga, kaya nga kung titingnan mo, wala kang makikitang coconut oil sa market na naka-clear glass. Unless, of course, no sabi ni Sir Marco, aside na parang hindi ma-hide yung natutulog na oil, para din po, ginagawa nilang yellow because if it's really pure coconut oil, makikita mo that it's actually not yellow. It's clear white. So, yes, yun po yun. So, actually, I feel uh, somewhat mixed dyan, mixed emotion, at nasada ko kasi these producers of good oil is trying to mimic the bad oils cause in picture para lang po mabenta sila. That's how mm-hmm. bad marketing mm-hmm. is against the healthy oil that what that we are actually abundantly blessed sa atin sa Pilipinas. So, yes, yun yes. lang po muna for now. As much as we want to to extend more information about you, we are excited to be for you to be a part of the low carb con. This is going to be the first in the country. So, it's going to be historical and I hope po mas, makakasama namin kayo invite friends and families. We still have time kasi meron po tayong pre-registration rate. Mas mababa po ito. This is, what, 25% less than the regular rate until July 10 po. Okay? So, punta lang po sa lowcarbcon 2021.com dash slash main. Nandyan lang po yan. And you will also see the profile of our speakers that you will get to see in the coming days in our What's Up Doc and also with our co-founder, Dr. Iris Redev of Filipino Success Movement. Sir Marco, any last words pa before we end? Wala po. I hope to see all of you dito po sa ating Low Carb Con sa July 24 or 25. Thank Maraming you. salamat po everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.